This is Mike Nice from the Hip Hop Chronicles, and welcome to the second episode of the Baltimore City Mural Web Series. In this episode, we are searching for more information and history about a mural located at North Curry Street in West Baltimore. And this mural represents African heritage and leaders in the black community. Luckily, while on my search, I was able to link up with the director of the project, Mr. Sean James of Mural Masters, Inc. Hi, my name is Sean James. I'm the owner and operator of Mural Masters Incorporated. Um, it's a for-profit uh, public arts contracting company. Uh, Mural Masters, uh, it's basically my personal business. Uh, I became a professional muralist um, full-time in 2010. Um, that's when I kind of um, really um, devoted all my time to creating murals. Um, prior to that, I was the director of the Baltimore Mural Program, which I um, was uh, working with the Baltimore Office of Promotion of the Arts. I produced about 150 or so murals and public art pieces around Baltimore City. Um, it's kind of where I cut my teeth in the business side of it. I'd always been a, um, a professional artist. Um, I did my first mural in Baltimore City in 1998 when I was an um, arts educator over in Pigtown neighborhood. And um, that kind of uh, dovetailed into a lot of community activism and stuff that I did. Um, started Helped start a nonprofit art center for kids over in Moral Park. Um, then Mural Masters came about as a nonprofit program to help those kids um, to do murals. A lot like the basis of what Art at Work was is based off of. Is the, That was the template that we had. And um, that was kind of uh, re-enveloped into the um, Access Art program that I initially started a couple of years prior. And then as I said, fast forward, time's not always linear, but fast forward, um, in 2010, I decided to recapture the name Mural Masters and make it a for-profit entity for myself. Now that we know more about Mural Masters Inc. and Mr. Sean James, I wanted to know more about the history of the Wall of Pride. Yes, yeah, so this is actually the third iteration of the Wall of Pride mural. Um, so early, um, I believe it was late 70s, early 80s, um, Pontella Mason painted a um, Wall of Pride one mural, which showed African-American lineage um, throughout history um, on this wall. Um, it stayed up for some time, came through the state of disrepair, and then they actually had him come back and with his wife, um, Deborah, they completely redid the entire wall. And it was a more elaborate uh, history of African-American culture. Um, from different tribes and, and, and icons in Africa, all the way up through Marcus Garvey, Martin Luther King, up to the, at that time, the present time, which was uh, like the, the mid, mid 80s. Um, there's a lot of pictures and stuff out of that mural. It became an icon for the city, um, for this neighborhood. Most of the community surrounded itself about it. And when you come to see it, there was a lot of information there um, that you could take in and it was beautifully done. But unfortunately, um, paint, being such it is, doesn't last forever. The wall itself became in serious disrepair. I was brought on as a consultant to see if the mural could be saved. And in my professional estimation, it could not be. There's too much plaster and mortar coming off the wall. All the paint was old. And it would just be um, cost prohibitive to be able to restore the mural back to what it was. And by this time, um, my good friend Pontella Mason had passed away. Um, so what my solution was, was to get people who had worked with P Pontella and known him personally and who were um, master muralists or master painters themselves to come out and re-envision what the Wall of Pride would be. So at that time, we hired Ernest Shaw to come up with a design um, for the Wall of Pride, um, pushed it through the neighborhood, let them see what we, our ideas, see if they had any input or objections to what we were doing. Um, we got a, a lot of community and neighborhood support for this, for this job. Um, after we had that, we um, went and found funders to fund, fund the mural, and um, I have to credit the Baltimore Office of Promotion of the Arts for finding funding for this job. And um, they did a great job of being able to raise money and raise awareness for what it was that we were doing. So after that, um, my team came in and completely resurfaced the wall, tore down all the old plaster, removed all the old paint that could come off of it, uh, patched the wall, fixed it, resealed the wall, and then primed it out so you have a brand new canvas. And then uh, Ernest Shaw, uh, myself, Michelle Santos, and others came out to the wall and um, executed the mural that you see here. 
And as I took a closer look at the art and images displayed on the wall from award-winning Nigerian author Chimamanda Daichi, along with the incomparable singer, songwriter, musician, arranger, and civil rights activist Nina Simone, former U.S. representative and civil rights activist John Lewis, activist and former NFL star Colin Kaepernick, political activist and general of the Negro Improvement Association Marcus Garvey Sr., professor and author Toni Morrison, and the one and only Pontella Mason himself. I wanted to know how they went about selecting each person on the wall. That's um, really the endeavor of Ernest Shaw. He um, did a lot of research into the community and um, he's an um, uh, avid and vocal educator, um, not only in art, but in black history and black culture. And he decided on some of the images that he wanted. There were more images there, but through conversation with the neighborhood and the communities and the committees that we had put together, we kind of narrowed it down through dialogue that these would be the icons that we would pick. Because um, one, um, it was too much to try to put everything back um, as it was. And two, um, it was nearly impossible to be able to duplicate what Pontella Mason had originally painted. So um, that being said, we knew that we weren't going to be able to duplicate what he was doing and it's very difficult to ask another artist to recreate another artist's work. So um, we wanted to make sure that this was a tribute to what was there before and held within, the, um, within it the passion, the heart, and the idea of what the mural was supposed to be about. So that's how we came up with these. My next question was, with a mural this size, how long did it take you all to complete the project? Um, years of planning, years of raising the funding, um, getting hopes up, getting hopes dashed. Uh, that is the nature of the game, especially when it comes to a, um, a wall this size and this significance. Um, overall, it was about three years. Wow. Um, from first walking out here, taking a look at the mural, to actually putting a brush on the wall. Pontella Mason is perhaps one of the most unsung visual artists of Baltimore City. He has created murals for the Anacostia Community Museum, President Jimmy Carter, Kurt Smoke, and several public and private organizations. He was born in Rocky Mount, North Carolina, and attended Baltimore City College High School. He graduated from the New York City School of Visual Arts and began painting murals throughout Baltimore City beginning in 1974. Thanks for checking out another episode of the Baltimore City Mural Web Series. If you want to know more information about Pontella Mason, you can visit Pontella Mason on Facebook. And you can find more information about Sean James. Go to my website, which is Mural Masters Inc., which is M U R A L M A S T E R S I N C dot com. That's my website. And then you can find Mural Masters Inc. on Instagram and Facebook. And E Shaw Art, E S H A W A R T Art. Um, you can find that on Instagram as well. And that's more about um, Ernest Shaw. And to find out more information about the Hip Hop Chronicles and view other episodes of the Baltimore City Mural Series, visit weaa.org.